I think all of your favorite artists are finito and finished. I don't think none of these people are making any coin from the music business. I don't. I agree with that. The music game can be tough on artists, grabbing a big slice of the cash while the musicians get peanuts. These deals might look good initially, but they often tie artists down hard. Just look at Meek Mill, who says he doesn't make a dime from his tracks, or TLC, who struggled with money despite their huge album sales. Lil Wayne once hinted at the hidden nightmares of the industry. If you've seen this, you'll never sleep again, revealing the often unseen struggles that can haunt artists. Why do so many dope artists get caught in these traps? Stick with us as we dig into more horrible truths about the thriving billion-dollar music business. Number 1. The True Hidden Cost of a Record Deal Have you ever thought about what really goes on with record deals and labels? It's pretty shocking when you get into the details. People often talk about how the music industry can really take advantage of artists, almost like they're being robbed of what's rightfully theirs. This isn't just a wild idea I'm throwing out. It's a serious issue that's been discussed for a long time. They started this back a half decade ago, maybe a decade ago. Than I could have ever imagined. I'm with you. I think there's a focus on streaming. Uh, AI, I think there's a focus on just replacing you guys, the Human artists. Beings, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The artists. They got, uh, I think there's a focus on the world music. Comparing the treatment of artists to being raped is a strong and disturbing metaphor but it's used because the situation can be that harsh. Putting something negative out into the world isn't pleasant, but it's important to shed light on the truth. These contracts that artists sign can often leave them with very little, while the record labels get the lion's share of the profits. It's like the artists are bound by chains that look shiny on the outside, but are actually pretty tight and restrictive. So why do artists keep finding themselves in trouble with the record labels? Take someone like Meek Mill, a rapper who has made it big but claims he hasn't made money from his music. Or consider the group TLC, who made one of the greatest albums ever and sold millions of records, yet they couldn't even afford to pay $155,000 for a lawsuit. These stories are all too common and show a bigger problem that runs deep in the music business. The sad truth is that while the songs fill up stadiums and climb the charts, the artists behind them often struggle feeling cheated and defeated by endless legal issues and confusing financial statements. The industry, like a cunning player in a game, knows all the rules and plays them expertly, leaving little chance for the artist to come out ahead. Some might say that these artists knew what they were getting into and that they had a choice. But what real choice is there when the gatekeepers of your dreams are the ones who know how to play the system to their advantage? This pattern of exploitation, followed by brief moments of success, is often hidden behind the glamour of award shows and gold records, a thin layer that hardly covers the underlying issues. Next time you listen to a popular song, think about the difficult path the artist had to take to bring that music to you. Behind the scenes, they might be fighting hard battles, crying in silence, and trying to keep up their strength in an industry that should have supported them better. Their stories are a warning to those who are just starting out in music, filled with hope but cautious about entering the spotlight. Imagine you're a new rapper who just got signed by a big music company with a deal worth $4 million. It sounds amazing, right? All that money seems like it's going to change your life. But here's the thing. That money isn't really yours. It's kind of like borrowing a huge amount that you have to pay back, and the contract you signed to get it can be really confusing. Let's look at the group TLC as an example. They became super famous and sold over 10 million albums. You'd think they made a ton of money, right? Wrong. Each member of the group only got about $15,000, and they actually ended up owing money. Yes, they were in debt. Despite their fame, they couldn't afford anything fancier than a basic car, a RAV4, which is a pretty standard vehicle not something you'd expect a superstar to drive. This huge difference between what people think artists earn and what they actually get is common in the music industry. It's a little secret that not many know about. When you sign a contract, you're not just getting money, 
You're agreeing to pay back every penny the company spends on you. They'll tell you, we're going to make you a star. But what that really means is, we're going to spend a lot of money on making you famous, which you will then owe us. Let's explain this further. The money your label spends isn't a gift. It's more like a loan. They pay for marketing, recording your music, producing it, and making those cool music videos. But here's the catch. You have to pay all of that back before you see any real profit. You might dream of fancy cars and big houses, but many artists end up living a much more humble life. You hear about big checks and think you'll live the high life, but the reality can be a lot of debt and stress. You're sold the dream of fame and fortune, but you might end up with a nightmare of debts. The music industry looks glamorous, but it can be pretty tough on artists. It's set up in a way that can really take advantage of them. When you get a deal, it's important to understand every part of your contract. Don't get caught up in the excitement without knowing what you're getting into. Remember the stories of those who found out the hard way. The music business doesn't just produce songs. It also produces cautionary tales of what can happen when you don't pay attention to the details. Always make sure you know what you're signing so your dreams of stardom don't turn into financial nightmares. Imagine entering into a deal that feels like you're borrowing money from someone who isn't very nice, but this time, that person is dressed up like a fancy business and calls itself a record company. They offer you $4 million to help you make your music album, which seems like a great help at first. However, when you sign your name on their contract, you might not realize just yet that this deal is going to tie you up in some tricky financial ways. But getting a record deal is just the beginning. You good? All right. Hey. No, 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 no. You good, you good, you good. It's dope. Number two. Trapped by a $4 million contract. This $4 million isn't just given to you. It's actually a loan, which means it's money that you'll have to pay back. From the moment you agree to this, every dollar you make from your music has to first go toward paying back this big loan. The record company sitting comfortably because they're protected Make sure they get back the money they gave you before you see any profit. When it's time to split any money left after paying back the loan, don't expect things to be split fairly. The idea of sharing the profits evenly, half and half, isn't going to happen. Instead, whatever money is left continues to be divided in a way that favors the record company. This ensures they always end up with more, leaving you, the artist, to collect much less. At the same time, famous people like Kerry Washington go on TV to say they're hosting shows like Saturday Night Live with guests like Eminem. Hi, I'm Kerry Washington, and I'm hosting Saturday Night Live this week with musical guest Eminem. This is fun. Are you having fun? <laughs> of course. And Eminem, are you having fun? Adding some sparkle to the whole music business. They talk about how much fun they're having. Two of us are having fun. Which contrasts sharply with the tough deals being made behind the scenes in the music industry. These public appearances, full of excitement and smiles, hide the harsh reality that many musicians face when they sign contracts that aren't in their best interest. It's an odd mix of fun on the surface and tough business dealings underneath. The music industry, acting like that not-so-nice lender, but in a much fancier outfit keeps drawing in musicians with promises of fame and success. However, these promises often come with hidden costs that are buried deep within complicated contracts and cheerful public announcements. The advents you're about to receive seems like a huge amount of money, one that might trick you into thinking you've really made it. It's the kind of cash that might make you feel on top of the world, ready to show off to those who doubted you. You could be driving through your neighborhood in the newest, flashiest car, making everyone jealous and feeling like you've just won big. I'm the proudest, most successful person around, you might say, feeling like you're making history in your own unique way. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement. Suddenly, you're wearing the most expensive clothes, surrounded by people who seem to admire you, all while you dismiss the struggles you face to get here. You might even thank the big names in the industry who noticed you, feeling grateful and validated. At that moment, you might feel like nothing can touch you. However, this big amount of money isn't as great as it seems. It's actually more like a trap. Many people end up spending all this money on fancy clothes, 
jewelry, and other luxury items very quickly. They think these things will show everyone how successful they are, but all these purchases start to add up. You might think you're building up your image, but you're also digging yourself into a hole of debt. This is a common trick in the industry, to make you feel rich and successful while actually keeping you dependent on them. As you enjoy your new fame and the attention that comes with it, it's easy to miss how you're slowly getting more and more trapped by your spending. The industry sees another young talent they can profit from, another story of rags to riches that might not end well. You become a part of a show where you're both the main character and the audience, dazzled by your own story. But the real story, the one that involves your actual financial health, is hidden behind the glamorous scenes written in contract terms that aren't in your favor. They really do thank you for playing along because it keeps the show going. Look at this shiny new remote control. It looks like a black Lamborghini. It's not just any remote. It's designed to show off wealth, just like the black accessories I wear, a pink ring and two bracelets. I flaunt these things casually, and people can't help but be impressed. They stop and stare, constantly a mazid, repeatedly saying, wow, as they look on. The record company really pushes this kind of spending. They suggest you buy these fancy things and share pictures on social media to look successful. They even help you find the best places to buy luxury cars and expensive jewelry, making it seem like they're doing you a favor. But let's not forget the details of that big $4 million contract you signed. It came with a $1 million upfront payment. But remember, this money isn't just given away. It comes with strings attached. As a rapper, this upfront money is meant to be paid back through your music, concerts, and merchandise. It's like a loan. While everyone else sees only the luxury and glamour, there's a hidden side to it. That upfront money is part of a bigger plan where you end up owing more than you might realize. Every flashy item and each post you share online isn't just for fun. It's a step towards deeper debt. The music industry benefits from your image and keeps making money, while you have to keep up with the expectations and pay back what you owe. It's all part of the game. So you've landed a big $3 million deal, which sounds great, right? But hold on, right off the bat, you're down $1 million because that's what you owe your record label. Before you even get started, before any music is made, you're already in debt. Now it's time to start recording your album. The label sets you up in this fancy studio with all the best equipment. They say it's all for you, to help you make the best album possible. Next, let's see what recording is really like. Number 3. The Strategic Stranglehold of Record Labels But here's the thing. Everything in that studio is super expensive. The label tells you it's all top-notch and necessary for your music. They hook you up with the most famous producers, the ones who charge a lot of money. Sure, these producers are good, but they're also eating up your budget fast. You might start to feel like you're not in charge of your own music. The label is making all these decisions about who you work with and where you record. On the Off the Record podcast, DJ Academics talks about how labels often control artists like this. They're not just trying to help. They're also trying to make sure they get a big return on their investment. They push you to spend more, which means you owe more. It's like being guided every step of the way. But this guidance comes with strings attached. You're not just making music. You're also constantly spending money on what the label says you need. This makes it tough for any artist to keep their own vision and could even mess up how much money you make in the future. It's like you're paying twice, once with your creativity and again with your freedom to make your own choices. Crafted the scheme were barely batting an eyelid as they neatly engineered a financial straitjacket around the aspiring rapper. The saga began under the guise of generosity a whopping $2 million allocated for recording. Yet this ostensible act of largesse was nothing more than a golden handcuff, expertly designed to tether the artist tightly within the label's golden gates. The plan was deviously simple. Book a high-end studio for six months straight, each day's session draining the budget like a slow leak. The manager, releasing the rapid depleting of funds at this rate, he proposed a cunning counter-movie. Why bleed money on rental when they could build their own studio for a fraction of the cost? 
This suggestion, however, was quickly smothered by the label's ironclad stipulation. They would only sanction expenses for venues within their pre-approved list. The implication was clear. There would be no sidestepping into more economical alternatives. Thus cornered by the label's strategic chokehold, the rapper and their team were coerced into settling for a mansion in the Hollywood Hills, a place that oozed luxury and excess as much as it did strategic fiscal drainage. At $3,500 a day, it was a lavish trap set under the pretense of creativity and freedom. The label's method was nothing short of Machiavellian, ensuring that every cent of the artist's budget flowed back into a circuit of facilities that were, one could argue, part of a grander design to maintain control and dependency. In this chess game of music production, the label held all the high-ranking pieces, moving the artist like a pawn across a board rigged with golden snares. This wasn't just about making music. It was about weaving a web of financial dependence that ensured the artist remained under the thumb of the label, perpetually dancing to their tune, both metaphorically and literally. The artist, hoping to break out and make a mark, found themselves ensnared in a spectacle orchestrated to ensure they stayed right where the industry giants could see them and profit from them. The music label had a clever way to keep a tight grip on a young rapper by controlling how the rapper's budget was used. They gave the rapper a big budget of $2 million to record music, but there was a catch. They insisted the rapper book a very expensive studio for six whole months, which would use up the money quickly. When the rapper's manager suggested building their own studio to save money, the label immediately shut down the idea. They made it clear that they would only approve spending on studios they had already chosen, leaving no room for cheaper options. Left with no other choice, the rapper had to go along with the label's plan and ended up recording in a luxurious mansion in the Hollywood Hills, which cost $3,500 a day. This place wasn't just a studio, it was part of a bigger strategy by the label to keep the rapper financially dependent on them. By forcing the rapper to use such an expensive location, the label cleverly made sure the money stayed within their preferred network of expensive services. This wasn't just a case of a label supporting an artist. It was a strategic move to make sure the rapper couldn't become financially independent or make decisions without the label's approval. The label played a game where they made all the rules and the rapper had little choice but to follow them. This situation highlights how some music labels use financial tactics not just to produce music, but to hold power over artists, keeping them tied to the label's costly resources and under their control. The young rapper, eager to succeed in the industry, found themselves trapped in a setup designed to benefit the label at every turn, reducing the artist's chance to stand on their own. Owning a recording studio and making your signed artists record there can seem a bit shady, like a sneaky way to keep money within the company. It's like the money that's supposed to go to the artist just ends up back in the pockets of the studio owners. Imagine you're a new artist at a record label, and they send you to a fancy studio that charges between $300 to $500 an hour. If you record there for three to six months, you could end up spending around $400,000. Suddenly, your $3 million budget for making music drops down to $2.6 million, but there's more. This spending isn't just using up your budget, it's actually turning into a debt you owe to your label, which means you now owe $1.4 million back to them. Now, let's find out if a big hit can pay off the costs. Number 4. The Financial Consequences of Producing Pop Hits But that's not all. Your album needs a smash hit to make your mark and pay off this debt. It has to be the kind of song that tops charts, plays non-stop in clubs, and blasts from radios everywhere. To get that hit, you'll likely need to work with a famous, and very expensive, producer. The label will tell you this is what you need to become a star and hit it big. But they often don't mention how this whole setup, from studio fees to pricey producers, is cleverly designed to keep you spending more and more. You're caught in a cycle where you keep paying into a system that benefits from your talent and your debts. This is how the music business often works. It's set up to make sure the company always wins, 
while artists, excited by the chance at fame, might not see how they're losing financially as they chase their dreams. In the world of music, things look exciting, but it's actually quite tough and can be a bit unfair, all thanks to the record companies. They make it sound great, promising to connect you with the best music producers, those who have a knack for making songs that everyone loves. But when you hear about the costs, it's shocking. You might have to pay from $75,000 to $150,000 just for some time in the studio with these top producers. Let's think a bit smaller, though, and say you go for a producer who charges $50,000 for each song. Suddenly, you've spent $600,000, and half of your budget is gone. Now you're left with $2 million, but here's the thing. You owe your record label exactly this much after you finish your album. But there's more. You need even more money for marketing. And remember, the label told you to buy expensive clothes and jewelry to look good and stand out. But really, buying all these fancy things doesn't help much in the long run for getting fans to love and buy your music. These buys are just a quick fix, and their value drops off as fast as they came. So here you are, your money nearly gone, and you're stuck in a tricky spot. Your cool new look might grab some attention, but it doesn't really do much to make sure fans stick around or that your songs sell well. It's a risky situation where you could end up famous but with no real money or, worse, forgotten. With all these risks and the massive costs, you have to wonder if trying to hit it big is really worth it. In this tricky music business, the record companies tend to have the upper hand, and you might just end up risking too much for a dream that's hard to catch. In the music industry, once you sign a contract with a record label, they provide you with a marketing team. This team is tasked with promoting your new album to ensure it reaches as many ears as possible. They kick things off by spending large sums, sometimes up to $500,000, to place your songs on the most popular playlists on platforms like Spotify. This strategy helps your music get noticed and listened to by a broader audience. However, their marketing efforts extend beyond just digital platforms. While it's illegal for record labels to directly pay radio stations to play their artists' music, the industry has crafted some creative workarounds. Rather than paying directly for airplay, the label might shell out around $400,000 to buy advertising space on a radio station. This move is essentially a roundabout way of ensuring your songs get played, particularly during peak listening times when the most listeners are tuned in. Here's where it gets tricky. All the money the label spends to boost your career, you're on the hook for it. For instance, if your label invests $2.9 million in marketing your music, you'll find yourself in debt to them for this amount. Despite your music gaining popularity and streams, you might only end up seeing a tiny fraction of the earnings, perhaps just $100,000. So, while it might appear that you're making it big in the music world, you're simultaneously accruing a significant debt to your label, making it challenging to truly reap the financial rewards of your hard work and talent. It might seem like a dream come true to become a successful musician, with your songs known by everyone and your face on billboards. But beneath this exciting story, there's a hidden reality full of costs and tough realities that most people don't see. When you make your album, it's not just you working on it. You have a whole team, including managers, agents, and publicists, who help run things behind the scenes. These people play a big part in your career, but hiring them is expensive. You end up paying about $600,000 for their services. So, before your album even gets out there, you owe a huge amount of $3.5 million, leaving you with just 500 kexen. That's the tooth side of the music business. After your album is released and your songs become popular, the next big thing is to go on tour. This is your chance to perform, live, and meet fans, but it also means spending a lot on travel and hotels. Since you're now a famous musician, you're expected to live up to a certain glamorous image that your record label has built around you. This means you can't just travel like everyone else. You need to fly on private jets. Each trip can cost between $30,000 to $50,000 which quickly adds up. Let's break down how sometimes what's sold as luxury 
is really just slick advertising. Number 5. The Real Debt of a Music Star's Lifestyle Living this luxury life is part of being a famous musician, but it also means you're spending a lot more money. The cost of staying in hotels, moving from one place to another, and keeping up with a high-end lifestyle piles up. With every show and public appearance, there's a big expense behind the scenes. The public might see the glamorous side of fame, but they don't see the constant spending. Every concert, every appearance, and every interview isn't just about sharing your music. It's also about keeping up with the expensive image that comes with being a star. This side of fame involves making a lot of money, but also spending a lot to keep up appearances. This is what it's like in the music industry. Every step forward in your career isn't just about your talent. It's also about managing a lot of money and meeting high expectations. Being a successful musician means balancing your art with the reality of big expenses. Imagine you're a new rapper dreaming of fame and eager to perform under the spotlight. However, there's a less glamorous side to this dream that involves a lot of costs that might not be obvious at first. You'll have to pay for hotels and even your own customized tour bus. The record label might offer to pay these costs for you initially, but actually, they are just giving you a loan that you'll have to repay later. By the time you've paid for all these things, you've already spent $500,000 more than you planned. Now, suppose you release a song that earns $5 million. You might think you've hit the jackpot, but don't celebrate just yet. This money doesn't go straight to you. First, it has to be used to pay back the $4 million you owe to your record label. So, out of the $5 million, you're left with much less than expected. Often, experienced rappers tell newcomers that all this spending is worth it. They believe they will not only pay back their debts, but also make enough money to keep for themselves. However, it's not as simple as it sounds. The truth is, the system is set up in a way that benefits the record label more than the artist. The label takes a big portion of the earnings, supposedly as a return on their investment in you. Many rappers are sold on the dream of big success and believe they'll make enough money to cover all their costs and still have plenty left over. However, this is usually not how things turn out. The promise of large profits and freedom from debt is often misleading. It makes artists think they'll be financially secure once they become famous. They end up learning a difficult lesson in how the music industry works. The idea that you'll soon be free from financial worries and able to enjoy your earnings is mostly a fantasy. The reality is that the record label often ends up making the most money, while the artist ends up with far less than expected. This system benefits those who are already successful or who have managed to overcome many obstacles, but it can be quite unforgiving to newcomers trying to make their mark. Imagine you've made it big in the music world and you've got a $1 million check with your name on it. But before you start planning how to spend it, remember the record label gets a cut first. In this business, what artists like you end up with is usually pretty small. While famous musicians might negotiate better deals, newcomers like you often end up with only about 20% of the royalties. That means from your $1 million, you might only see 200000 and sometimes it's even less. Imagine getting just 4%, which will be only 40,000 from that million. Consider the example of Summer Walker, who only got 15% of her earnings in her first deal back in 2007. Or take the cases of big names like Meek Mill and Lil Wayne, who had to fight their own labels in court just to get the money they deserved. This shows how the system is set up to benefit the labels more than the artists. Now, you might think that you could make up for it with money from tours and selling merchandise. But there's something called a 360 deal that labels started using in the early 2000s. This type of deal means the label gets a part of everything you earn. Not just from your music, but also from concerts, TV appearances, and even your merchandise sales. It's like for every dollar you earn, the label takes a large part of it. These 360 deals can be really restrictive. They don't just control how much money you make, but can also have a say in what you say publicly, what you wear, and more. It turns artists into products that the labels sell to make money.
Despite how tough this sounds, signing with a label can still be tempting. Labels have the power and connections to make someone famous quickly. From 2010 to 2018, nearly all the hip-hop songs that hit the top 10 on the Billboard charts were by artists signed to labels. So, the benefits of being with a label are clear, even though the terms might not always be fair. However, some artists manage to get better deals. For instance, SCA got a deal where she keeps 70% of her earnings and 21 Savage owns all his music masters. There's also Russ, who shows you can still make it big without a label's help, although it takes a lot of hard work and smart planning. What do you think? Are the sacrifices for a record deal worth the potential fame and fortune? Like, comment and subscribe for more insights and discussions on this topic.